Hello and welcome to the video for sixth grade for lesson 10.7 for Monday, April the 13th. Uh, first of all, I'd like to again wish you all a happy Easter. I hope everyone had a wonderful time celebrating, um, even though things might have looked a little bit differently because of restrictions on being able to travel and get together in large groups. Um, I do have an announcement, so this is especially important for this particular class because um, I've had one person show up on the conference call, which is wonderful. I'd be happy to see all of you, um, but I've only had one other person uh, check in. So on the days that we have um, the conference calls, it's not required to be on the call, but I will ask you what you're working on with math if you choose to show up for that. Um, but it is your responsibility to check in with me. So um, that is to let me know what you've been working on. If you have any questions, um, you can do Prodigy. You can do an online Go math lesson. Um, I know we have uh, sixth grade has more new content that we are doing than any of the other grades. So it's kind of important to take that day off. Um, which is fine, but just post a comment to let me know what you've been working on, um, even if it's just getting caught up because you've had so many other things that you're working on. So just to clear up what the expectations are for that, um, let's go ahead and take a look at our lesson. So we are going to be taking the information that we have used for the last few lessons and some of the stuff that we've done from earlier years now to find the area of composite shapes. So composite shapes are made up of two or more simple figures such as triangular, triangles, can't even talk, or quadrilaterals. So um, at some point we're gonna be working with squares, uh, rectangles, triangles, and trapezoids today. So uh, the first thing they want us to do is to evaluate the area for each of the rectangles. So to do that, we would just use our standard formula that we learned back in third grade uh, for finding the length times the width uh, is the area. So we have four feet times 10 feet, and that's going to give us 40 square feet. Um, we are going to take that because we have two of those rectangles, and we're gonna do two times 40 to get 80 square feet. Now we are going to work on the triangle. So we have four, uh, by four, so we're going to do four times four times one half. So that is going to give us 16 times one half equals eight. We again have two of those triangles, one here, one here, and that is going to give us 16. And then I'm going to go to my square, my four by four, um, I don't know why they do it that way, but sure. Oh, okay, I see. Instead of doing the, the same thing as length times width here, they're doing it as a square. So we're gonna do four squared equals 16 feet squared. And we only have one of those squares. It's in the top of the shape. So we are gonna have 80 feet plus 16 feet plus another 16 feet. So that gives us 32 plus 80, and that should be 112 feet squared. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at a couple of our other examples that we have. So I don't recall if I assigned these in the book, but I do wanna go over them because we will use information from some of these to help us. So. The first thing we are going to do is work on finding the length of this particular triangle. So we are going to have 16 centimeters and we are going to want to jot in the 20. So we can kind of cheat a little bit and make this part times the one half to get 10. That's going to give us 160 square centimeters. The square part is going to be the square of 12, which would be 144. Again, if you need to pause the video at any point so you can kind of work ahead of me, um, that would be a good choice. That way you are not um, a little bit confused 
uh, when I start blurting things out that you haven't gotten to yet. So um, this one, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the height first. Um, Oh, sorry, I have to do the basis first. So let me write the basis first. And when I evaluate it, I will probably um, use that part. So I'm going to have a base of uh, 12 here and a base of 9 here. Actually, I will, I'll use the height first. Um, so that's going to give me 12 plus 9, which is going to give me 21. And our height is 6. So I'm going to take this part. Uh, times this part to get 3. That's going to give me 21 times 3, and that is going to give me 63 centimeters squared. Uh, the next one, the reason I'm picking this one is because we are going to subtract this amount from our total. So one foot is equal to 12 inches. So um, I don't know why they do that, but well, actually, I do know why they do that. Um, it's just not very nice. So the area of the entire thing is going to be 72 inches squared. Uh, we are going to take that amount for the square, and it's going to be 3 times 3. That's going to be 9. And we are going to do 72 minus 9, and that should give us 63. And so the area of the shaded portion of the rectangle would be 63 inches squared. So let's take a look at our Sharon show. So we have something similar to what we worked on. The only difference being um, we don't have a square on the top. So um, the other one, this particular part here was a square. And then there were two triangles that met it. And it kind of made a flat roof instead of a triangular roof. Um, so we are going to start with the area of one rectangle. We are going to have 10 by 5. So 10 times 5 is going to give us 50. We are going to do 2 times 50, which is 100. And then the length of the base of the triangle is going to be the length of this section plus 3 plus this section which is going to give us 5 plus 3 in the middle plus 5, which would give us 13. Now I can do um, my height, which is going to be 4. Actually, I'll put that part there, even though I'm going to actually evaluate that part first. Now what I could do for this one is uh, go ahead and uh, do 13 times 4 and then take the answer and multiply it by 1 half. So that is going to give me uh, 52, cut it in half would be 26. Or conversely, I could do 1 half times 4 to get 2. 2 times 13 gives me 26. So I've got 50 plus 13, plus 26. Oops, I did that slightly differently than I probably should have. So, let's do that. So I'm gonna change it a little bit. Oh, sorry, that's what I did. This was should have been 100. So 100 plus 13 plus um, 26 should give us 139 square feet for that. Uh, let's take a look at number three. So this one, we don't have our checkpoints. So we are going to have two different triangles. And we are going to have uh, one rectangle. So our rectangle portion is going to give us 7 times 12. So I'm going to do rectangle equals 7 times 12, which is going to be 84. Each of our triangles, if you look at the shape, look like they go into the middle. So we have 6 here. 
Um, we are not going to use the hypotenuse. So we're going to use this times um, the height. So the height is going to come to the midpoint of this for both of these, it looks like. And that is going to give us 12. So we're going to have 1 half times 12 times 5 for each triangle. We're not going to worry about this third uh, length, which is the hypotenuse, for the purposes of figuring out the area. So that's going to give us 12 times 6, or sorry, 12 um, times 1 half, which is 6 times 5 equals 30. And we are going to do that twice, and that would give us 60. So that would give us 144 for that one. So again, 7 times 12 for the rectangular portion. This portion is in the middle, so the 6 it's showing. And then half of 12 will go on this one, which makes this height 12 and also makes this height 12. Our base is, of the triangle is going to be 5, and we are not going to use the hypotenuse to figure out the um, area. And number five, I didn't mean to drag that. I meant to drag this part. Um, they want to find the area of the shaded region. So um, we have a little bit of an easier time for this one. Uh, we can use the portion on the outside here uh, to do 12.75 times 8.8, .8, even though this is going to take a moment. So a carry the 4, that gives us 60. Carry a 6, that gives us 22. Carry a 2, and that will give us 10. Bring down a 0. And again, we're going to have the same thing. 0, 0, 22, and 10. And so we have one, two, three decimal places. And so it'd be 112. Um, that seems odd. No, that's right. Yeah, 112.2 for that. The area for this one uh, we are going to have to use a little bit of math. So they're saying that this part is 2.5, this part is 2.5. So if this side was supposed to be 8.8, .8, we are going to do 8.8 .8 minus 5 to get 3.8. And so I'm going to put that part down here. And we are multiplying by 4.25. And I should do that on uh, the top. And we'll just make that our line. So we're going to have 40, uh, 20, 34, 15, down our 0, 15, carry the 1, gives us 7, no carry there, and 12. And so if I scooch this down, I'm going to get uh, one, two, three decimal places. So I've got zero, five, one, carry the one, six, one, and that's a really badly placed decimal point. <laughs> that uh, should be down here. Uh, so 16.15. So the last step would be to do 112.20 minus. 16.15 and I'm going to use a trick that you should have learned in third grade uh, <laughs> so I'm going to group this 11 um, into, um, uh, shoot, how do I want to explain that? I'm taking this away from here, but it changes uh, this whole thing to 10, and then I have to take away um, from here to make that 11, and so I'm just kind of shorthand writing this. So 
the this part would go from here to give me 11 groups of um, 10 and then I take away a group of 10 to send it over here as 10 ones um, so this is just kind of a shorthand way of writing that um, so that's going to give me 96 0.05 sorry for stumbling over how to explain that it's been so long since I've had to think about uh, doing that but it saves with having to write a 0 here and then 11 and then a 10 above um, so that would give us 96.05 for the area of the shaded portion here so uh, hopefully that helps um, this is a little bit trickier of a lesson so it's understandable if there are any questions uh, please go back and watch the video uh, different sections if you need to see it more than once um, I will be happy to uh, work with you guys if you have any questions please feel free to post comments um, on Wednesday will be your conference call which doesn't help you for uh, this particular lesson but I do have one on Tuesday um, so if you want to pop in on that just ask for permission I'll send you the link for that one and you can come in on Tuesday as well and uh, get some additional help with this portion if you are struggling with this so hope you have a great day and I will see you tomorrow